Hi, how you doing? I'm Seth. I'm Will. We're here today to do a product spotlight on the Martin Logan electrostatic speakers, and specifically the ESL Xs. We've been wanting to do yes. this for a while. Yeah, we have. And uh, these speakers are kind of magic. I'm going to mention that a few times because they do something with music that we don't see out of any other speaker we've got. So we should talk about it a little bit. Huh? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Let's jump let, in. Let the people know what they could be missing. So we're going to talk about just some of the stats and numbers on these things. We'll then go into the content that we listened to and watched, and then we'll go into some of the pros and cons of these speakers, because there are some absolute pros, and there are a couple cons, so uh, that'll help to you determine if it's right for you. So yeah. first, let's just talk some numbers on these guys, and then we'll talk about electrostatic and what that's all about and why it's magic. Yeah, I told you I'm going to talk about magic a bunch. So uh, first, 91 dB sensitive. I don't know if that's true or not because these do well with power a little more so than other things are in the same sensitivity. But um, we push these a lot in here with a Yamaha uh, 20 series, 2050 receiver, and there's no, no issues at all, and get plenty yeah. loud, and they sound great. Um, crossed over at 400 hertz, you got two eight inch drivers in these guys. You got one in the front, you got one in the back, and they are kind of long throw drivers, so you got a, a bunch of excursion. You can get good bass out of them. They rate these guys down to 41 hertz. I don't know if that's true or not as well, because that sometimes gets played with a little bit. But uh, you do get good bass out of these things. And one of the tracks that we listen to, the Bella Fleck track, uh, great bass at the start of that. These are all uh, bass ports on the bottom of these guys. Uh, 52 pounds, so don't drop it on your foot. Yeah, and be careful if you're move when you're moving them around after you unbox your beautiful ESL line series. Martin Logan speaker. Um, you want to grab from around the bottom area. Don't grab from here. Don't be power finger guy and yeah. squeeze this <laughs> and destroy your electrostatic panel. Yeah, yeah that would be bad. You might pretend to slow dance with, with the speaker before you hook them up. And yeah. they, they do need a, a power supply. A great point. Each great one point. needs a power supply on top of the, the obvious speaker wire. Yep, yeah, great point. Um, so let's talk about the magic. So the magic is this electrostatic panel, yeah. 344 square inches. And here's the whole deal with these panels. So you take your regular one and a half inch aluminum tweeter like you got in your calf, or you got your, what is it? 1.4 by 2.5 inch, uh, 2.4 inch folded motion tweeter. These are all materials like, you know, it'll be some sort of paper or it'll be silk or it'll be titanium, whatever the, the speaker is. Brillium? Is that Brilliant? a full kind of Brilliant Brilliant action? Brilliant, yeah. yeah. Um, Exotic metals. But the thing with that is so when it gets a note, that material has to vibrate. And that vibration, the faster it can be, the you know, more rigid it is, that's what gives us our note. It gives us what we hear. The faster it is, the more responsive it is. What's magic with these things, instead of kind of that metal material, silk, whatever you got, you have this whole panel here. It's a thin film material that has an electrical charge. Like Will mentioned, you got to plug them into power. And that whole panel vibrates. And one is it's incredibly light, so it's going to be faster than you see with regular materials. Also, the magic, I'm going to mention that a lot, the magic happens because that entire panel is radiating as opposed to just kind of your point source, one and a half inch driver here, little rectangular driver here. Um, and that just gives you a depth and detail you can't see out of any other speaker that's out no, there. We'll talk can't. about what we we heard with that. But so that's the whole thing behind these electrostatic designs, and it's really kind of what put Martin Logan on the map. It is a fun little tidbit. Um, KLH started messing around with the with the electrostatic, and an, uh, another brand did as well. And then Martin Logan came out; they perfected it and came out with the prototype in 1980. Yep, and it's that was the uh, like the homemade robot, basically, like the aluminum panel, yeah, crazy stuff. I don't know if it talked or not, but duct tape, solder. Yep, <laughs> and then yeah, 1983, they finally got it right, and they came out with this thing. They've been kind of building on that ever yeah, since. Yeah, it said CES 1983, which is kind of cool, and then that influenced and motivated them, and the folded motion ribbon tweeter evolved from that. So that's cool. The little baby uh, ribbon tweeter is. <laughs> Technically, the electrostatic baby. Yeah, yep. Um, and here we are. So let's talk about what uh, what we heard. Demo track. Yeah. So uh, we did a lot of music stuff for this, but then we also did some video, and I'll talk about the video and why that was amazing. But um, first, let's go over some of the music stuff that we had. So we did a Homeless by Paul Simon. That's been one that makes to mark that we've kind of incorporated into our demo tracks. Um, that track's really good because he's got all sorts of crazy stuff going on. He's got the, I don't know, howler monkeys or humans that sound like howler monkeys and 
parrots and big feet. I don't know what they, all these creatures are. Maybe they're not. They're just humans that sound like that. I think Sasquatch is part of the quartet. Could be. Back there, yeah. Could be when they kick into that low bass. Yeah. Ooh, um, ooh, ooh. <laughs> but you have about 30, into that track, you have about 30 seconds into it when all these crazy vocals come in. And during that, you notice just a clarity of those vocals. Yeah. And then the big thing that these speakers do is a depth. So where a lot of speakers are out there, you kind of get a two-dimensional sound stage. If I got my drum over here, I got my singer here, I got my guitar here, you really get a three-dimensional sense with these speakers. And that's what you get in that track, kicking about 30 seconds, when the first hoo-hoo-hoo kicks in, it seems like it's behind whatever everything else that's going on, uh, which is kind of amazing. That's sort of magic. What these speakers do, I didn't mention before, but they have a dipolar design where there's sound coming out the front of this panel, but there's also sound coming out the back, and okay. that helps to give you that depth yeah. that you don't see with a conventional speaker where all the drivers are firing forward. Um, next one we listened to was a Bella Fleck and the Fleck Tones, and this was Flight of the Cosmic Hippo. I didn't get to listen to this one, but I heard, actually, I heard a little snippet, but it sounded good. I wish I would have, would have uh, kept listening for the, to the whole track. After this review, you can. Yeah. Listen, all, listen all you want. Um, about 30 seconds in, you get a bunch of cymbals that are gone. So before we get some guitar, and then you've got some cymbals. Some and I think these are our new uh, cymbal king, probably. Yeah. Before we talked in one of our other reviews about Focal and how their speakers, you know, when a cymbal's hitting, it's like, man, that's a cymbal in the room. It's not a speaker recreating a cymbal. And these things are just so accurate. And again, magic. I'm just going to say magic 14 times this review because... Yeah. Um, because they just make real music. It's music when you close your eyes. You, know, you go to you know, a concert. Normally your eyes aren't closed, probably. But you go to a concert and close your eyes. You're just you're hearing a stage in front of you. You're hearing a picture in yeah. front of you. If you could hear a picture, that's what these do, and that's what this particular track really brings out. Yeah, um, really so soulful. Yeah, feeds yeah. the music that feeds your soul with these speakers. Yeah, yeah, yeah it evokes emotion. That's yeah. a great, the great way you put it. Um, then we had some Led Zeppelin, Achilles' Last Stand. Which, uh, if you want to go fight the rhino or uh, sock a Sasquatch or whatever, or me should... like mess up a hotel room like they did. There we go. <laughs> yep. Listen to this song first, then go fight the Sasquatch. You have yeah. a, a better chance of winning. Um, yeah. When the guitar kicks in on that, and a big halfway through the track, um, I was ready. I was ready to battle. Yep. Give me, give me the Sasquatch. Um, and it, what it did is just again, it evokes emotion. It does, yeah. If you see someone listening to these speakers, or if you listen to them and you're not bobbing your head or swaying to the beat of the, the, whatever track you're playing, then <laughs> I don't know what's going to impress you. You know, it's it's cool when you listen to a song you might have heard 10,000 times, and yeah. you're like, oh, that's what the dude says. Yeah. Oh, I never heard that little nuance, and that's what these speakers do, that just because of their design, other speakers can't do it, because they're unique in that regard. They are. Um, Talk about a little video content. Video. So um, we did a, our favorite, Lord of the Rings, uh, Return of the King, the, the good trilogy, not the bad one, and uh, Battle of Pelennor Fields. And we like this track. It's got a lot of stuff. You've got your king yelling out stuff, and so we listen for the vocals. And, hey, does it sound clear? Does it sound like a 200-pound man? And the king's probably 200 pounds. Yeah. As opposed to a 60-pound 60 schoolboy or a 400-pound Andre the Giant. He sounds natural. Sounds like, oh, okay, that voice is coming from a, yeah. you know, a kingly man. Um, you've got the 50-foot uh, elephants walking around on their stumps. We were having a discussion earlier that elephants don't really have feet. They're not, they're not hooves. Yeah, no, they're not, not really feet like ours. So, you know, well brought, they're, they, they're walking around their stumps. It's I, like, oh, an elephant foot is kind of like I a guess, stump. Yeah, kind of like a tree stump is pretty usually pretty big. So I guess <laughs> yeah. well, them stumping stump. about, yep. <laughs> yeah. you know, crazy bass and that. In that oh, track, yeah. you also have a lot of details with arrows going overhead and that. Yeah. Um, and these, the did, these did a wonderful job with it. Now, we used the Martin Logan ESLC for this demo. So right now, we got the motion 50 center channel here for our demos we use the ESLC and that's kind of a hybrid where it's got the electrostatic panel plus their folded motion tweeter yeah um, that's a beautiful and that speaker. accuracy was there yeah um, now the reason it's not here right now is I did some of this demo also at my house I've got it there I was watching a little Ted Lasso yeah the uh, optimist coach on um, Apple TV plus great show yeah um, he's coaching a British soccer team and they have accents because they're in England, and uh, I can hear what they're saying. Yeah. With that center channel, and I actually have the Martin Logan Vantage, which are a lot like this, an older model. They have powered subwoofers built into them. Um, I can hear what they say. I don't have to turn on the subtitles. Um, and so that accuracy that you get 
you know, I, I turn on subtitles with every other speaker I've demoed there, not with the ESLC. So with that, it's great. Also, um, talking about evoking emotion, so there's a show on Netflix, it's called Dark, and I won't go much into it, but time traveling, spooky, scary, murder stuff. Um, and there are certain scenes in there where it's time for spooky stuff, because you got the dark cave and other things going on. It'll make sense when you watch the show. And you get this uh, spooky violin. <laughs> no, it doesn't exactly sound like that. That wasn't very spooky. There's the, the psycho noise. Are... <laughs> that's better. Kind of? That is, that's like better. Like a squeak, violin squeak? It's, like a, it's a violin squeak, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's spooky Squeal. and scary. Yeah. And with those speakers, when spooky, scary noise kicks in, I'm, not, I'm, you know, I'm watching the show, I'm like, I'm into it, and all of a sudden, I am frightened because this spooky, scary noise. And the way that it, that it produces it, it's like spooky, scary is coming from this entire area as opposed to just a, a point source. Yeah. Um, so it, it sounds kind of weird, kind of like, eh, what's up with this set, dude? It's kind of wacky. But when you watch it, it makes sense. It just it brings forth that emotion that you don't yeah. see with conventional yeah, speakers. Yeah, the depth of field is layered, so if you hear... Uh, raindrops from the outside of the car and they're showing the front of the car through the windshield then you'll you would hear kind of like surround sound you would hear the raindrops behind you yeah the depth of field with that these put out yeah are pretty insane yeah so let's talk about the uh, pros and cons of these things so the pros i think are everything we talked about magic just comes down to magic these produce sound in a way that's different than any other speaker um and you know they're not cheap. These are about four grand a pair. But if you really enjoy music and you want to hear that magic, I, I would absolutely recommend auditioning a pair because yeah, you just you don't see that out of conventional stuff. Yeah. If you want your soul to get touched, then these speakers these speakers will touch it. Yeah. No, <laughs> or it'll I like pull that. it out of you. <laughs> I like that. So they just that realism, that detail, that soundstage. Mark was talking earlier about a track he was listening to where lots of stuff is two dimensional. So if I had drummer, singer, guitarist, you kind of hear it in that one plane. What he hears with these is where you got those three elements, but you might have triangle guy in front. Now, yeah, the triangle doesn't really bring a lot to the band, I guess, but no. it is cool though to have that three dimensional side of it. We have a it better is. instrument than the triangle <laughs> over here, I guess. We got piano guy or whatever. Or cowbell. Yeah. Or cowbell. Yeah, cowbell. <laughs> I'd say cowbell's better than a triangle, probably. It, it, does a little get, more to it. Does he get paid more? Probably the same. Either way, you're getting paid zero. You just get to hang out with the band. Yeah, it's a minimum salary. Probably. Um, so that, that three-dimensional aspect, you see that with these more so than conventional speakers. I would say that the big con with these would be placement. So when we first got these in our office, we had just sold off our ESL demos, which are the step down from this. Smaller panel, one driver, a little different cabinet. Um, Pop these in basically the same spots. And I wasn't impressed. Listen to them like, man, are these things broken? Talk to one of the head honchos over Martin Logan, like, hey, what's going on with these things? We talked for a little bit, a little while. Um, then I got a chance to spend some more time with them. So we took down some of these acoustic panels. Acoustic panels are bad when you have a back wave that you're relying on because of the dipolar design. Moved them out to a different spot in the room, and the magic kicked in. It's like, huh, that's what I was expecting. Um, and it's kind of nice because one of our employees who was gone for a little while and then came back, he and I have a very similar ear. So before I did this second tweak, he listened to him as well, and he hadn't been on for a while. He didn't know what I thought when I listened to him, and he said exactly the same thing. He's like, man, these just aren't that great. Then set him up. I wouldn't say correctly. Set him up differently for the acoustics of the room. And then all of a sudden, bang, the magic came alive. Yeah. Um, so, you know, a couple of things when it comes to placement is with any sort of speaker, um, you have where if you move them back and forth against the wall, you'll get more and less bass. Yeah. You'll have with speakers like this that have a limited dispersion pattern. These are about 40 degrees vertically, 30 degrees horizontally. Um, being able to tow those into a listening area, adjusting your rake angle. If I am a speaker, adjusting it back and forth can help with lifting up the soundstage. Those are all crucial things. If you don't have that ability to be able to do that, you might want to look at another speaker. Or if you have them, and you're like, hmm, they don't sound their best here. There are things you can do with positioning to, to make a difference. I would say that's really the big con, is that they're more room-specific or room-dependent than you see with other types of speakers. Um, but that's about, that's about it. I'm giving them a big two thumbs up. I love the Magic, and again, I, I have the Martin Logan Vantage Electrostats at home. Um, I could have any speaker, Yeah. and I, I dig what they do. Yeah, I remember the first time I saw the any electrostatic speaker from Mark Logan was at Tweeter when I went in there. That was like their main 
that's like that was like the having the highest end like uh, our Porsche GT 3s in the showroom they would have and demo the heck out of those speakers and they sounded badass yeah 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 so I'm giving them two thumbs up uh, I'll give them a raise the roof and two thumbs up beautiful beautiful so Thanks for spending the time. Let us know if you have any questions. Please like and subscribe if you like this so we can continue to do it. And we'll see you next time with another product spotlight. Thanks again. Have a good one.